While the term metaverse has been invented in the 1970s, it has only started gaining traction in the mainstream during last years when everyone was stuck at home and Facebook saw this as an opportunity to make bank on that very fact. The metaverse and augmented reality, at their foundation, are media technologies that attempt to display material in the most natural way possible, by seamlessly merging virtual sights, sounds, and even sensations into our view of the actual world around us. This complete control over our very perception of reality by one of the biggest and most controversial companies at the moment, is obviously rubbing people the wrong way and it shows from the backlash. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you the privacy and dystopian nightmare that would await us if we were to lie down and just take it, what an alternative metaverse made for the people would look like, and finally, whether or not Facebook would even be the company to bring a metaverse to the consumers in the first place. While his fellow tech CEOs want to usher in a new era of widespread interplanetary travel, Facebook creator Mark Zuckerberg dreams of expanding into cyberspace rather than outer space. Silicon Valley's rulers are all done with earthly reality, but as Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos intend to physically leave, Zuckerberg wants to design a better earthly experience, one chosen by Facebook. If that seems a little hazy, it's because the metaverse is an octopus with an almost limitless number of tentacles and no one blueprint, which is why many people refer to it as the Web 3.0. In his presentation last month, Zuckerberg stated that it is the successor of mobile internet. Think of the metaverse as an embodied internet, where instead of merely seeing stuff, you are a part of it. The Great Hoodied One came on CBS News last month as part of his debut Metaverse Media Blitz to play show and tell with Horizon Workrooms and illustrate what it means to be within the internet. Personally, I find this frightening. Let's face it. We live in a society where countless layers of technology exist between each of us and our daily lives, moderating our access to news and information, mediating our relationships with friends and family, filtering our impressions of products and services, and even influencing our acceptance of fundamental facts. We now live mediated lives, with each of us more reliant on the businesses that furnish and maintain the intermediary layers. And when those layers are exploited to influence us, the industry views it as marketing rather than abuse. And it's not just being used to sell stuff, it's also being used to spread misinformation and foster societal conflict. The reality is that we already live in perilous times, and AR has the potential to magnify the hazards to unprecedented degrees. Consider yourself going down the street in your hometown, casually gazing at folks you pass on the sidewalk. It's similar to today, except that large luminous bubbles of information are hovering above the heads of everyone you see. Perhaps the goal is good, allowing individuals to share their hobbies and interests with others around them. Consider the possibility that third parties may be able to inject their own material, perhaps as a paid filter layer that only certain individuals would be able to see. Those who have been tagged may be unaware that others can perceive them in this light. Consider working behind a retail counter. AR will alter the way you evaluate your consumers. That is because personal data will float all about them, revealing their hobbies and interests, spending patterns, car kind, house size, and even gross annual income. It would have been inconceivable decades ago to envision firms having access to such information, but we now accept it as the cost of being digital consumers. Personal information will follow us wherever we go with AR, revealing our activities and diminishing our privacy. Is this going to make the world a better place? I don't think so, but that's where we're going. Workrooms. Facebook's answer to Zoom is an immersive conference call software in which employees don an Oculus VR headset and share a virtual office space to, say, make notes on a digital whiteboard using hand gestures as their avatars mirror their real actions. The demo appears to be absurdly disappointing. The cutesy avatars appear like what would result if Nintendo created a Wii Work app, but it's easy to understand why management would flock to a pleasant, brilliantly colored panoptic workplace where you can't escape your boss's eyes, even in your own bedroom. Horizon Workrooms, according to Zuckerberg, is only a taste of what's to come. In five years, individuals will be able to live wherever they want and work from anywhere they want while remaining present, he said. If the metaverse concept extends beyond the ludicrous CGI-driven trickery visible via the goggles of an Oculus helmet, the concept of being present may shift entirely in the coming years, notwithstanding Zuckerberg's optimistic half-decade timescale. 
Many metaverse designers foresee a future in which physical, augmented, and virtual worlds merge into an unified improved reality ruled by a common economic and media consumption system. Consider purchasing a Rick and Morty themed skin for your digital character in the video game Fortnite. That is presently feasible, but only after purchasing 1,500 V-Bucks, Fortnite's in-game money. Only in the popular battle royale shooter does dressing up as Rick Sanchez work. A metaverse infrastructure would potentially allow you to transfer the digital clothing to wear at an online Lady Gaga performance which is planned for Fortnite next year or during a collective Peloton exercise with buddies. After all, the common experience we call civilized society is rapidly dissolving, owing in large part to the fact that we each live in our own digital bubble, with everyone being fed personalized news and information suited to their own particular ideas. This strengthens our prejudices and solidifies our beliefs. However, we may now enter a public arena and have some degree of shared experience in a shared world. That, too, will be lost with AR. When you stroll down a street in an augmented environment, you will find a city full with material that promotes your own opinions, tricking you into thinking that everyone believes the same way you do. When I walked down the same street, I saw dramatically different information, advocating opposing perspectives that led me to believe contradictory things about the same inhabitants of the same town. Niantic is launching a framework for creating real-world metaverse apps. The platform, dubbed Lightship, is based around the components required to connect the digital and physical worlds. According to Hank, Lightship will enable smartphone apps to determine if a user's camera is pointing at the sky or water map the surfaces and depth of a scene in real time, and position a virtual item behind an actual one. Niantic is best recognized for inventing one of the most popular smartphone games of all time, Pokemon Go. The business is unlocking the vault of technology that they've been utilizing to develop their goods to allow others build planet-scale AR apps using Lightship. Hank, who formerly oversaw Google Maps before founding Niantic, said Lightship's mission is to create a template for what AR can be. While internet behemoths like as Meta and Apple are developing comparable technologies, he believes Lightship's compatibility for iOS and Android will make it an appealing option to developers. Hank described the metaverse as a dystopian horror in a blog post in August. He opposes the concept of technology luring people away from reality. Unlike the VR metaverse advocated by Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, he wants Niantic and Lightship developers to create AR apps that keep users engaged with the real world. There's a fork in the road, he points out. One road leads to applications that are disconnected from the world around us and do not help us connect with the people we are around. According to Hank, the other direction Niantic is heading with Lightship is encouraging individuals to do things together with other humans who are living. Niantic is already preparing a big update to Lightship for next year which will include the development of what Hank refers to as a visual positioning system for AR glasses. Using the new approach, glasses with displays will be able to comprehend exactly where they are in the actual world, allowing virtual items like Pikachu to remain constantly tethered to real-world locales. It's a necessary component for making AR glasses, such as the ones Niantic is developing with Qualcomm, functional. Silicon Valley believes that the groundwork for the metaverse is already in place, and with cause. A fundamental transformation like this is usually a multi-decade, incremental process, but over the last few years, there has been an undeniable sense that the underlying elements are coming together in a way that feels very fresh and very different. Zuckerberg's brand of techno-utopianism isn't anything new. It's a remake of the philosophy of post 1960s cyber prophets who viewed the World Wide Web as a possible nether world of New Age liberalism and emancipation, an almost spiritual trip that would liberate us from borders and laws and shatter the constraints of body and mind. However, his version is toned down. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually, it has things that are only possible virtually, and it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just gotta find something to wear. So, what is your opinion on this potentially privacy and human-focused metaverse which isn't just controlled by a single company and doesn't completely take over our perception but instead simply augments our current world? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it.
Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.